In this series of modules from Little Fuse University, learn how Little Fuse, the global leader in circuit protection, can help you design electrical safety into your facility by utilizing our extensive experience in helping customers improve their electrical systems and safety of installations. Our technical expertise and capabilities combined with innovative products can reduce your electrical hazards while increasing electrical safety. Codes and standards committees continue to build on the growing trend to increase safety and little fuse products including current limiting fuses, high resistive grounding systems, and arc flash and other protection relays allow you to become compliant and maintain compliance with these regulations. Be sure to review the entire list of available topics included in this Little Fuse University series of modules for more ways to design electrical safety into your facility. In this module from the Little Fuse University series, Electrical Safety by Design, we look at how current limiting fuses can be used to improve your electrical safety while also reviewing the various advantages of designing current limitation into your electrical system. To begin, this module reviews one of the products that can easily be designed in or installed to lower electrical hazards and increase safety, current limiting fuses. Now I'll turn things over to Ken, who will discuss current limitation and its many advantages. What is current limitation? Well, according to Article 240.2 of the National Electrical Code, basically a current limiting fuse or circuit breaker is one that opens and clears a fault within the very first half cycle. A cycle in AC current, 60 cycles per second, a half a cycle is about 8.3 milliseconds. Here's a graphic illustration that shows what can happen if you're not using a current limiting device. The gray area you see there is what can happen if the amount of energy, the gray area under the curve is called what's called the I-square-T. And what you're looking at, you're actually looking at one, two, three, four, five cycles of an AC current. And that gray area is the amount of energy that is actually allowed to flow through the circuit when a short circuit or arc flash occurs. Now, if you're using a current lim limiting fuse, like an RK5 fuse, the next slide shows what the effect that the fuse has on limiting the energy that's allowed to flow through the circuit. So you can see a little hump there that uh, is just a small fraction of the amount of uh, gray area that you see if you're not using a current limiting device. As you can see here, if you replace the RK5 fuse with an RK1 fuse, you get even a smaller amount of energy that may flow through the circuit, which is illustrated there in, in the green curve. And sometimes, just by going from an RK5 to an RK1, uh, you can reduce the energy significantly. In fact, sometimes you can go from one hazard risk category down to another. The other advantages of using current limitation is that it, uh, certainly it reduces the arc flash hazards by lowering the incident energy that the electrical workers may uh, be subjected to. It also reduces equipment damage because the energy is so much lower. That I square T, by the way, is heat energy and also magnetic energy that can reduce equipment damage after when an arc flash or short circuit occurs. Also, it aids in selective coordination. We're going to talk a little bit about selective coordination coming up, but by using current limiting devices, you can improve or achieve selective coordination in many cases. Uh, it also increases the series interrupting ratings uh, within your plant or facility, and we'll look at that. And it can also increase the short circuit current ratings of industrial control panels. We're going to look at that in a little bit. And certainly it's easy to install and easy to maintain. Let's take a look at how it reduces equipment damage. Here's a slide that shows the effect of timing. If you can interrupt the current there in the first uh, picture in less than 8 milliseconds, you can see a picture of what results from the arc flash. However, if you allow the arc flash to sustain itself for 35 milliseconds, you can begin to see what can happen. The arc flash is beginning to affect the, the areas there. And then the last picture there is if you allow the arc flash to, or the current to flow for 500 milliseconds, which is a half a second, you can see the damage that can occur. Uh, the chart to the right shows that cable fires begin in about 100 milliseconds, copper fires uh, start in about 150, uh, and steel sheet fires begin at around 200 milliseconds in this condition. We saw this slide earlier in one of the other modules. Again, this is just a reminder of the damage that can occur 
uh, as a result of an arc flash or short circuit. And obviously, there's uh, equipment has to be replaced and tremendous downtime. So if you can design in safety by designing in a, a current limiting device that will uh, interrupt the current much more quickly, you will have less damage or no damage and reduce hazards. As I mentioned earlier, designing in an RK1 or a Class J fuse instead of a Class RK5 or some of these uh, the old-time uh, Class H renewable fuses will likely reduce the possible incident energy from one PPE category down to another. We had a, um, a, a situation occurred uh, a couple years ago where a particular customer had been uh, using a 200-amp RK5 fuse in their circuit. And uh, when they did their study, when they calculated the incident energy having this 200-amp RK5 fuse, they, they found out that the incident energy was something like 11.6 calories per square centimeter, uh, which is a category or PPE category 3. So whenever the uh, workers had to go into that cabinet to replace a fuse or do any kind of work, they had to dress up in, uh, in a Category 3 type PPE. And, and some of you probably realize that or understand Category 3 is a hood and it's a suit and it's pretty uncomfortable. And it takes a while to put it on to do the job. So we, uh, we said the, told the customer, said, well, if you replace that 200 amp RK5 fuse with a 200 amp RK1 fuse, uh, they said, well, what will that do for us? Well, I said, well, you know, uh, put it into your uh, computer system and find out what the incident energy would be. So they, inst they, they put 200 amp RK1 fuse, and it turned out that it reduced the incident energy from 11.6 calories down to 3.5 or so, which is a Category 1. So just by changing the fuse, which fits into the same fuse clips, incidentally, from a 200 amp RK5 to a 200 amp RK1, it reduced the incident energy significantly. In fact, it reduced the hazardous category by two categories, from a three down to a one. So now the workers are able to get, go into the cabinet with uh, category one PPE, which is basically daily wear. They don't have to take the additional time to dress up in a category three. The work gets done much more quickly, and the workers are much more happy. Here's a, a slide that actually shows what can happen if you're not using a current limiting device. This is a, a test we did in our lab a few years ago, and we used a, a standard molded case circuit breaker in the test. It was a good one. It was rated for like 65,000 amps, and it was uh, right out of the box. It was brand new, and, and we subjected it to a, uh, an arc flash and calibrated the equipment to, to deliver about 25,000 amps at 480 volts, which is very typical in most buildings, most uh, industrial facilities and plants and even uh, commercial buildings. It's not unusual to find 25,000 amps at 480 volts. So let's take a look and see what happened when a standard molded case circuit breaker was used. In this next slide, we show, uh, again, what can happen if you're using a current limiting device rather than a non-current limiting device. And again, under the same conditions, we used a, uh, an RK1 fuse rather than a, a non-current limiting circuit breaker. And this, were, this was the results. As you can see, just by going to a current limiting device, it can reduce the incident energy significantly. The other advantage of uh, using a current limiting device is that it, it can increase the series interrupting ratings. Uh, what that means is uh, there are various circuit breaker manufacturers that have tested their circuit breakers with an upstream current limiting fuse. For example, here's a chart by uh, one of the manufacturers, and they show certain types of circuit breakers there on the right-hand side. And on the left, they show current limiting fuses that they have tested their circuit breakers with. And so in this particular case, this chart shows that if you use that current limiting fuse shown there with those particular circuit breakers, then the combination of the short circuit interrupting rating of that combination is a 100 kA rating. So uh, that's very high. Otherwise, the breakers by themselves probably only have maintain a, you know, a 10k or 22k type rating. But as long as you install it in a system that has the current limiting fuse feeding it up ahead, then that combination has been UL tested and approved and can withstand up to 100 kA and so on and so forth. This is another manufacturer 
again, that shows uh, as long as that particular type of circuit breaker is protected upstream by a certain current limiting fuse, then that combination has a higher short circuit interrupting rating. So using current limiting fuses can increase the short circuit current rating of your existing circuit breaker. So you can actually, if you're a designer, you can actually uh, save money by uh, using current limiting fuses in series with, with the circuit breaker. Rather than go out to buy or specify uh, circuit breakers that have higher interrupting ratings, you can easily accomplish that by adding a current limiting fuse in series with it. The other advantage of current limitation is that it can increase the short circuit current ratings of industrial control panels. In 2005, the NEC added a new article in, in the NEC called Article 409 that requires industrial control panels to be marked with their short circuit current rating. And in uh, Article 409, it actually refers to a certain UL standard called UL Standard 508A. And they actually say that 508A can be used to determine the short circuit current rating of the panels. So if you have an industrial control panel and you have to meet NEC Article 409, you can use UL 508A to determine or establish the short circuit current rating of the panel. And in UL 508A, they have a supplement in there called SB that actually assigns a high short circuit current rating when panels are using current limiting fuses in series with other devices. We actually wrote a short circuit current white paper that you can uh, download from our website and read it, but there's ways there in, in that paper describes by using a certain current limiting fuse in combination with other devices like contactors and motor starters and other things like that can increase the short circuit current rating of the entire panel. And last but not least, other advantages of current limitation are certainly are they are easy to replace, uh, install, maintain, and upgrade. So they fit in standard rejection type fuse clips. They're easy to install. Class J uh, fuses, for example, take up less space, or Class T take up less space than standard fuses. So there's all various advantages. As you can see here, these are other types of current limiting devices, current limiting fuses that can be used in your system. Little Fuse has a program called an Emerald Plus program that if you are a particular user that have a lot of fuses in your facility or you're designing a new system with a lot of fuses, the MRO Plus program actually can help you select the proper current limiting fuse, the most current limiting fuse, yet it still has time delay built into it. Many times uh, people are afraid to use a current limiting fuse because they think that, oh, uh, it may trip on inrush and so on and so forth. You know, we have a, a motor startup or we have transformer startup and we don't want the fuses uh, to open up on inrush. For more information, please visit our website, follow us on social media, or call our technical hotline. Thank you for your interest and for taking the time to review this module. In this module, we learned that designing current limiting fuses into your electrical system greatly enhances the protection provided to your electrical workers and equipment, while also improving the safety ratings of other critical components within your system. Please be sure to look at the other modules in this series to learn even more about designing electrical safety into your facility.